how are you guys doing? So, um, real quick, I wanted to actually do another video and I wanted to cover ear training. But before I jump into that, I just wanted to elaborate on my previous episode, episode 63. And uh, this is about, you know, talking about doing the, finding the notes of the major scales. Um, the other thing I talked about was when to say D sharp and when to say E flat. Okay, so I kind of explained, right, when you're using the scale, you always write the letters out, okay, but what if you want to play a song in a key that's unnatural? So for example, like A sharp. So we're going to learn the A sharp major scale. We're going to figure it out. So to start off with, should we say A sharp or B flat? Okay, so what we're going to do here is, I'll just tell you, the rule of thumb is you're always going to say the flat. Okay, so technically I would never say, okay, this song is in the key of A sharp, I would just say it's in the key of B flat. Okay, so, and the reason for that is, okay, it's, it's pretty simple, it's the same thing, so I wrote out the A sharp, I'm gonna start on A sharp, I'm gonna end on A sharp, and I wrote out all the other, oops, let me raise that. I wrote out all the other natural notes, so B, C, D, E, F, G, A. Okay, so now, first of all, A sharp to B needs to be a whole step. Okay, is A sharp to B a whole step? A sharp to B is not a whole step. So how do we make it true? A sharp to C is actually a whole step. But if I write C here, now I have to erase the B because there's no such thing as C flat, right? So it just, it wouldn't, it wouldn't work. It would, it would just look funny. But now if I change it to B flat, If I change this to B flat, and then I change this to B, well, I gotta erase everything. <laughs> so now that I, I'm starting off with B flat, it would be B flat, okay, or B. I write in my C, D, E, F, G, A, and B. Okay, so it's a given. If we're gonna start with B flat, that's the root, we're gonna end with B flat. Okay, so now, what's a whole step from B flat? C. So that is correct. From C, what's a whole step? I mean, what's a whole step from C? D. That is correct. And let me just write this in. Half step, whole step, whole step, whole step, half step. Okay, so D, we want a half step here. What's a half step? E flat. So this becomes E flat. And now that is true. Oh, whole step. I half, whole, whole, whole. Okay, so now we're at E flat. Whole step from E flat is one, two, F. So we got that. Whole step from F, one, two, G. A whole step from G, A. And a half step from A is B flat. So now we have our B flat major scale. B flat, C, D, E flat, F, G, A, and B flat, okay? So technically it is the same thing, but as you could see, if we started with A sharp, a whole step from A sharp here is C. So where's the B? The B's not there, and that's why we wouldn't say A sharp. Like I said, I don't know, I've never really, you know, needed this knowledge, but I don't know, I guess it's good to know. I mean, it makes sense. All right, so I just wanted to go over that because I didn't cover that in the last episode. So just remember, you're never going to say I'm in the key of A sharp or C sharp or D sharp or F sharp or G sharp or A sharp, C sharp, right? You're always going to say I'm in the key of B flat, D flat, E flat, G flat, A flat, B flat, D, okay? And this repeats. Okay, so take that knowledge and try to figure out how you would apply that to a real life situation, all right? Okay, so uh, music training, I mean ear training, this is a pretty um, common topic. Everybody wants, you know, they wish they could listen to a song and be like, oh, I, I know how to play it. Just by listening, I know it. Because I know that a lot of you who have your idols that you look up to, you know, you've seen them make stuff up or just like they've never played the song, but they've heard the song before or something and they, they just kind of know what chords to play or you know things like that. So 
This is all part of ear training, but the thing is, it is a slow process. It's not something that I'm gonna tell you something and all of a sudden you're gonna say, oh, yeah, I got it. I'm gonna listen to the radio and now I know, oh, G chord, oh, to the D chord, you know. So it's not quite like that, but I'll, I'll get you guys started, okay? Um, the reason, oh, me and my, me and my son, my son always says, uh, what is that again? So every time he talks, he goes, hey, daddy, daddy, so um, what, what, what is that again? Um, oh, yeah, so uh, me and Leon are playing games, and then, um, oh, what is that again? And it's so funny, because I told him, you have to try to stop saying that. But the thing is, I always say, um, right? Yeah, so like, um, so, so we have this thing. I'm trying not to say, um, and, he, and my son is trying not to say, what is that again? <laughs> it's so hard. Okay, so no more saying um. And I think now that I mentioned it, if you haven't noticed that in my previous videos, now that I mentioned it, if you ever go back, you're gonna notice that I do say it a lot. Okay, so I'm not gonna say um anymore. I feel like I can't talk. Okay, so ear training. The thing is, you want to practice it. People are willing to practice improving their ear because their goal is to, you know, be able to hear these songs and say like, okay, I, I got it, I can play it. Now, how you practice that, it, it needs to be explained, okay? You can't just listen to music and think if I listen to music, my ear will get better, okay? You have to find a way to understand the distance between notes. Okay, so it's two different things. Like, um, for example, if I were to close my eyes or something, or I couldn't see, and someone said, "What note is this?" I really don't know. You know, what note is this? I really don't know. Okay, ear training is more about hearing the first note and then hearing the other note. So now when I hear this. I can tell how far apart the notes are. And the way I do this is by, I chose songs. So like, for example, this reminds me of when I was small, I learned that song, Boogie Woogie on the ukulele. Okay, so when I hear this, okay, this is the root. This, and then I hear this, what is this? And that song plays in my head. Da, da. So now I know, okay, that's that's two whole steps up. So from C, I know that's E. So I'll kind of explain it and then I'll, I'll kind of give you guys an exercise. Did I say um? Did I just say that? Oh. Uh. <laughs> okay. So I'll kind of explain it and together we will, we will figure out how to practice this and I think it'll be a lot of fun. All right, let's get started. Okay, so let's practice. <laughs> you, know, you know what's funny is, so I was talking with my son, like I'm trying to figure out why we do this. Why he keeps saying, uh, why he keeps saying, what is that again? And I keep saying, yeah, so um, it's like, um, and what I think it is, is that I don't think so much when I talk. Like I think in my head and I expect my mouth, you know, the words to just follow. And sometimes it goes off track. Like my brain is in one place, but I'm saying, you know, whatever I'm saying. And then I realize like, oh, I gotta come back, you know, bring it back together. So that's usually what I mean. Yeah, so, um, you know, what is that again? <laughs> it's strange, I don't know. Oh, my son has my curse. Okay. Ear training. Okay, so let's take a look at the C major scale. C 
D, E, F, G, A, B, C. Okay, I could write out every single major scale, D flat, E flat, all of that, but I'm not going to. I'm just going to stick with some of the common, the common keys we play in on the ukulele. So these are your major scales right here, C major scale. Okay. And that's why we often start with the C major scale, because if you notice, the C major scale is the only scale where you use the only natural notes. Okay, I mean, it's the only key. In the key of C, we'll, we won't use any sharps or flats. Okay, um, And then F major scale, G major scale, and the A major scale. Okay, so I have the scales here. Okay. One way you can think of it is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eh, I guess we'll call it the eight. Okay, so I'll explain what all of this means a little later. But for now, let's just focus on the C major scale. Okay, so I'm always going to start with the one, meaning I'm going to pick C first. Okay. So here's how it starts. Okay, listen to this. I'm going to play two things. Okay, the first one is the scale. Oh, let me shorten it. Oh, that didn't really shorten it. But okay, so C D E F G F E D C. I'm either going to play that. Or I'm gonna play my boogie woogie tune. Okay, so what I'm gonna do is play the first two notes. Okay, so I don't want you to see, I'm gonna turn my ukulele around. Okay, but I'm either gonna play this, I'm a slower. Now what I'm gonna do is only play the first two notes, and I want you to tell me which am I, which song am I gonna play? The scale, or am I gonna play boogie woogie? Okay, so take a listen. Here we go. Okay, so what did that sound like to you? Am I playing the scale or boogie woogie? Listen again. Hopefully you said boogie woogie. Okay, so now let's take a listen again. What am I gonna play? Over time. Okay, hopefully you said boogie woogie again. Okay, let's try it again. Listen again. Okay, hopefully you say this is a scale. Okay, so this is the very, very beginning, the very basics of ear training, trying to improve your ear. Okay, so when you're if you're thinking that you can hear a note and say exactly what what note that is, that's a little bit different. That's more like perfect pitch kind of thing. So I, I know a few people, I, I don't think it's very common, but I know a couple people that can actually look at a music sheet and they can sing and they can just read the notes and they have perfect pitch where in A note, they can just sing it. You know, a C note, they can just sing it. A D flat note, they can just sing it. And you know, you put them in front of a tuner and they sing it, 
it's like really close if not perfect okay so that's a little bit different that's not what we're practicing we're actually practicing trying to learn the distance between notes okay so that means we need a given we need to know what is the one okay so if the one is c then i know when i hear this the scale then i know it's c d if i hear boogie woogie then i know it's c to e okay so what the numbers do <clears throat> is a lot of times um so for example jake might do this he can listen to a song and he doesn't have perfect pitch which means that he can't right off the bat say oh this is in the key of a flat or this is in the key of g or this is in the key of whatever f okay he can come pretty close sometimes but he doesn't have perfect pitch so he can't do that but he can he can listen and say okay well basically if this is the one the next chord is the five to the four you know whatever so now he's using these numbers so if I'm in the key of C is basically C uh, or oh, C the 5 would be G the 4 would be F the 5 back to G or you know something like that okay if I'm in the key of G it would be G the 5 would be D the 4 would be C okay so now we don't know what key we're in but he can pretty much say okay well whatever key we're in I know that it goes the one chord to the five chord to the four chord, okay? But we're not gonna do chords yet, okay? We're just focusing on notes, okay? So when we do chords though, it's almost the same thing, except the two would actually be, so one would be C, two would be D minor, three would be E minor, four would be F, five would be G, six would be A minor, okay? And, and it's like that. So when you're dealing with chords, you're basically just hearing, okay, the one, and then now you know what, what the A minor sounds like after the C chord, you know, so now you can kind of hear that, so you kind of study that. The hard part with chords though is that they're a combination of notes that are put together. So what I'm trying to get you guys to do is start off with just notes, okay? One note. So um, I'll, run, I'll run through the songs in my head, okay? And you should try to find your own songs, but um, so we got the scale. If I hear this, I know this is going into the scale, any key. Again, do it here. So as long as I hear the one, and then I hear this, I oh, this is going into the scale, so that means they must be playing one, two, or C, D, okay, whatever key they're in. Okay, now, the one, three, I told you I hear boogie woogie. What about the one? I hear that song, the farmer in the dell. Okay, so that's what I hear. Oh, that's farmer in the dell, that's a one four. Okay, now one five. I hear the Star Wars song, even though I've never seen the movie. Song, tonight I celebrate my love. Tonight I, tonight I celebrate. Something like that, right? Tonight I celebrate my love. So when you hear this, I think, okay, this, this isn't the scale. Okay, is this um the farmer? No, it's not the farmer in the dell. You know, so I'm using my ear. What? What is it? Uh, tonight, tonight I celebrate. Oh, tonight I celebrate my love. What was that? One six. Okay, one six. So that's how I used to practice. Okay, the one seven. I don't have a song for this, but. This is a very strange combination. Okay. The way that I remember this is just because the way it sounds. You might have heard this sound in um, 
a lot of those old samurai Japanese movies where, uh, let's see. So maybe like um, it's a scene, um, samurai is going to do something, I don't know what he's going to do that, all of a sudden you hear something like. So that's kind of like the C and B clashing. Okay. So when I hear that, those combinations right here, I hear this. I'm not actually thinking of a song, but the way that those two notes clash, the C and the B, to me that's kind of a, a distinct sound. Okay. So I'll kind of remember that. Okay. So um, you need to create your own songs you can copy mine if you know the songs right but same thing um just for example what does this sound like okay okay does this sound like um the scale scale sounded like this right so okay, no it's not the scale okay uh what was that boogie woogie Like that. Okay, does this sound like the farmer in the dell? Not quite. Okay, uh, the next one was Star Wars. Can you hear that? So, okay, hopefully, you could hear that. Okay, um, so oh, I said, I'm again. <laughs> okay, so Star Wars. Okay, so let's try, I'll just throw some out. Uh, I didn't say, um, I said, uh, okay, number one. Uh, okay, so C, when I go to two, that's the scale. When I go to three, that's the boogie, oh, is it two O's? Boogie woogie. Okay, when I go to one four, that's Farmer in the Dell. Okay, when I go to five, that's Star Wars. When I go to six, that was Celebrate My Love. Celebrate My Love for You. And seven was just the weird, um, I'll just call it the clashing, clash sound because the C and the B clashing which kind of gives it a weird almost like an eerie kind of sound okay, and then hopefully um, oh I forgot to go over one eight okay so when I do the octaves can you think of something so I think of somewhere over the rainbow So, all I'm trying to do, okay, so when you try to train your ear, you have all of this set up now. And if you need to, like I said, replace the songs, okay? So, when I play anything, like, okay, so don't look at my fingers, I'll turn around. I want you to listen to these two notes and tell me which song do you think I'm playing. Okay, does it sound like the scale? Does it sound like Boogie Woogie? Does it sound like The Farm in the Dell? Does it sound like Star Wars? Or Tonight I Celebrate My Love? Or like that clashing sound? Okay, it's not that one. Or does it sound like Somewhere Over the Rainbow? Okay, so listen again. Again, so the one, I'm playing the one first. Okay, so I'm actually telling you I'm in the key of C, so the first note is C. Then, okay, hopefully your ear is telling you Farmer in the Dell. The Farmer in the Dell. Okay, so if you, get, if you got it wrong, it's okay. It's just practice. You got to keep practicing this and then you'll start to hear it, okay? But this is how you you go through an ear training session. This is how you have to improve your ear, okay? It's not just listening to music 
all the time and going, oh, the chord changed. Oh, they changed chords again. Oh, they changed chords again. I mean, that's good to know, right? When you listen to a song. But to try and understand what chord they're changing to, okay, it starts with how you, how you train your ears with notes first. Okay? And then when you get good at this and you get comfortable with this, your brain will be trained to start understanding the distances or the, you know, the, as far as how far one note is to another. So you need to find a way to understand that. Okay, and that's what this whole episode is about. Just kind of getting you guys started. Okay, so let's try another one. Um, what is this? One more time. So listen to those two notes one more time. Okay, hopefully you got it. Okay, somewhere with a rainbow, so that would be one, eight. Okay, let's try this one. One more time. So you don't have to remember it the way that I remember it, like clashing, but you're trying to remember that sound, like just, yeah, that's a weird one. You know, maybe that's what you might be thinking. That sounds weird. Okay, so you might think of it as, okay, weird means one, seven. Okay. All right, so let's try another. Um, for you guys um, you got to figure out a way to test yourself hopefully if you have a friend or something that can play you know you can have them do it and you listen and you try to tell I uh, try to guess you know what note they're playing so if you don't know what key you're in you're probably gonna say okay what when you hear this you know okay that's Star Wars and then you're gonna say oh one five Okay, in this case, I'm telling you we're in the key of C, so I'm always, oh, let's try a different key. Okay, what is this? Listen to this. I'm not in the key of C anymore, okay, but listen to this sound. That's the one. I'm in the key of G, so I actually play G, A. Okay, uh, let's try another one. Here's the one. Again, one. Okay, I'm gonna continue. Oh. 
new Star Wars. I just realized as I played this, I kind of hear, um... Can't help falling in love with you. So, that's another one. One, five. If you like that song better, wise men say. Now when you hear that, now you say, okay, one, five. That's one, five, okay? So, and that was in the key of F, so I actually played F, C, F, C, okay? So, if you don't have somebody to practice with, I would say you can record yourself playing different notes, but you know, you record yourself doing like 50 of them, like one. Let me do it again. Okay, so that's one. Hopefully you heard the farmer in the dell. Okay, oh, so that's one way. And then that's one, then you do another one. Maybe you might start off with, um, again. Do it twice. Hopefully, you heard. Okay, over the rainbow. And now the thing is, if you do like twenty of them, thirty of them, forty of them, you won't memorize it. You know, and you don't start from the beginning every time. You just kind of mix it up. Start here, and then just listen. And you don't know where exactly you know you're starting the recording from. But when you hear it, you're gonna kind of know. Okay, um, you hear this. Oh, what is that? Hear it again. Ah, that sounds weird. Oh, the weird one, the straight one. What is it? One seven. It gotta be one seven. It sounds weird. <laughs> okay. So there, there you go. And then you'll kind of get more comfortable with it. Okay. And then that's why, like a lot of times too, this is a little trick that a lot of people I know use, and I do this too. When you're trying to figure out the chords to a song, uh, you tend to listen to the bass line. So the bass line might be going. Okay, so now when I hear the one. Now stop right there. What was the second one? Hey, that was Star Wars. So, okay, so that's the five. And then the next chord, it went here. And now I know... I know what a whole note down sounds like. So from here to here, and oh, he just moved down. He just moved down the whole step. So he's playing the one, the five, the four, and he went back to the five. So now I got it. Five, four, five, one. So I hope this helps. Uh, like I said, I understand that everybody, you know, a lot of you guys wish you guys could do this. And, you know, unfortunately, there's no real secret I can tell you where you're just going to turn on the radio and you're going to get it. You got to practice, okay? And this is a good way to practice. So this is my ear training episode for you guys. Try to get really comfortable with this. And then eventually you're going to start hearing the, the melodies in your head and, that, and then your ear is going to start recognizing the distance between notes, okay? And that's what we're trying to focus on, okay? Especially with this type of situation, this type of ear training, okay? So just remember, we're not actually trying to remember this is a B flat note. So anywhere in the world, when I hear this note, I should know, hey, that's B flat, okay? That's a completely different training. That's like perfect, you know, that's perfect pitch. And to be honest, I don't have perfect pitch. I don't know how you train for that. Um, I know one, oh, I said, oh my God. I know one guy who I used to work a long time with, uh, House of Music, and he would have the tuner. You know the, the tuning fork thing? Ding! And it's a A. So that's your perfect A. And he would do that all day at work. And there's no customers. And he would just listen to it. And I was thinking, what are you doing? Because the, the tuning fork is really soft, right? When you're kind of far away, you can't hear it. You have to kind of put it to your ear, and then you can hear it. So he always, he always look at him, he's like this. <laughs> he just looks so funny. But that's all he would do all day. And I don't know if it helped, because I don't know if he had perfect picture or not. But that's what he used to do. So 
<laughs> Maybe you can try that. I don't know. I don't know. But if you have any questions, leave a comment in the comment box and I'll check it out. I really hope this helps. And starting from now, going forward with my next videos, I hope I start saying um a lot less. It's going to be kind of challenging. All right, you guys, have a good day. I'll see you later. Hopefully, I'll see you guys tomorrow at the workshop or Sunday, Mondays. I'll see you guys soon. All right, cheers.